What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. The title of today's video is going to be The Truth About Genuine Desire. I'm going to try to keep this one really quick. I'm actually behind schedule on a bunch of stuff I need to do today. So let's keep this one as succinct and concise as possible. If you have questions about sugar daddy dating, let me help you. I have a free PDF guide called Seven Myths About Sugar Daddy Dating, and I can send it directly to your email inbox if you go to the link down below. When you click this link, you'll put in your email information. I'll send you the free PDF guide, no cost to you, of course. And when you do that, make sure that you click the button, click the little box that says that you want to receive uh, upcoming emails. Because in these emails, I release like videos that you guys can't get anywhere else, videos that I don't put on YouTube, blog posts, secret content, all kinds of stuff. So make sure that you sign up for that free guide, seven myths about sugar daddy dating, and make sure that you click the box that says like that you want to receive additional emails and I'll see you in your inbox. All right, so let's get into the meat of the video. This is called The Truth About Genuine Desire. This is a comment that I receive a lot on the channel where guys you're talking about uh, they don't sugar date or and, and or see escorts or, or companions. I made a video about are, is a sugar baby the same as an escort? Go check that out. I, I'm going to say and or because I do believe that there, I, honestly, I believe there is some similarity. Don't get offended. I think escorts are, I think sex work in general is a very necessary part of human society. There's obviously always been a demand for it. There's always been people who want to supply that demand. And um, just because I sort of relate the two together, don't anybody get offended. And go watch that video, Is a Sugar Baby the Same as an Escort, if you want to hear my full thoughts on the topic. Anyway, so some people's objection or in the conversation about uh, sugar dating and or seeing escorts or companions or uh, participating in any type of sex work is like, well, I don't want to do that. Guys will say that they don't want to do that because they want the woman to feel a genuine desire for them. So I want to talk a little bit about what genuine desire means and what is my opinion of this, my opinion of this, like saying that everybody comes at me with. In my opinion, everything is based on my opinion, uh, experiencing genuine desire, quote unquote, genuine desire, which is for the purpose of this video, we're going to say when you're dating somebody and that person has a super, super high level of attraction to you. So that person sees you as like an eight or nine or a 10 level of attraction and you just you just make her her world go round. She, she thinks everything about you is amazing. She thinks everything that you say is so fucking funny. She thinks you're the most smartest, most amazing guy in the world. And you could be totally average. You could be five foot seven, five foot four you know, just not very, nothing really special about you, but you could find this person that just thinks the world of you. I would say that I think that that is, it's a, a beautiful experience to have, especially if you've never experienced that before. It's a cool experience. It's definitely an, an ego boost and a confidence boost to have somebody basically like just treat you like, like a king, you know what I'm saying? Like they're blowing your phone up, texting you all the time. She always wants to see you. She always wants to hang out. She's asking you out. She's texting you things like, when can I see you again? She might be texting you like selfies or nudes and things like that. She's just giving you the, you know, the treatment, the king treatment. That is good to experience that, especially number one, if you've never experienced it before. And then number two, if you're just young, I think things in the realm of like dating and romance, there things are so much more amplified when you are young. There's a biological reason for this. I'll just briefly go across it. The reason why when you're young, like if you have these teenage love affairs or these love affairs in your young 20s, the reason why those emotions are so amplified is because your body is producing more of the chemicals that create like um, attachment, like emotional attachment, which are like vasopressin, oxytocin, dopamine, serotonin, etc. And as you get older, you guys know I'm 39. I'll be 40 in a few months. So uh, as you get older, like into your late 30s and your 40s and beyond, your body just produces fewer and less of those chemicals. And that's actually why you sort of need, most people, some people, especially men, need or desire relationships less as they get older is because your body is just not even producing those same types of chemicals that would make you like want to be in this you know amazing love affair with somebody else. All that to say, if you've never experienced this type of genuine desire, it is important. It's important to experience it. And I've said many times, I've said many times, and I'll repeat it here, sugar dating and or uh, seeing es escorts or companions or any type of sex work is not for, it's not a solution for men who struggle with women. In fact, it is the worst possible thing you could do if you are a man who struggles with women because it's just going to make it worse. Like if you have, if you need to learn how to attract women, 
how to speak to women, how to be, you know, seductive and charming and go from meeting someone in real life or on a dating app if people still use dating apps. I haven't been on a dating app in six months. Go from meeting the person to, you know, making that person uh, want to have a romantic or a sexual relationship with you. You need to learn how to do that. Luckily, it's a set of skills. You can learn it. I wrote a blog post about this several years ago, which is still very popular. One of the most popular blog posts on my uh, one of the most popular posts on my blog, and I'll link it down below. It's called uh, Three Books to Improve Your Dating and Sex Life." So if you're a guy that struggles with women, seeing sugar babies or escorts is not going to help you. I don't recommend you do it. I think you're just going to get finessed. Um, and you're setting yourself up. You're just you're just look like too easy of a mark, but you can work on these skills. But however, once you have mastered that, if you're not looking for a girlfriend or a wife, so you guys are looking for a long-term girlfriend or a wife, the white picket fence, the 3.2 kids. If that's you, then this nothing that I'm saying is applying to you. Actually, I don't even know why you're watching this channel. You need to go watch a video about where to find a wife, which I don't even know where that would be. Probably somewhere in Central America, somewhere they don't have the internet is the first place that I would look if I was going to try if I was trying to find a wife. But you guys are looking for relationships and wives. None of this is applies to you. This information is for people who You've been in some relationships, you're, you have a comfortability talking to women, and you just want to spend time in the company of very attractive women without so much of the uh, drama or the song and dance related to traditional dating. Right. If you, in my opinion, if you are a guy who fits those criteria, someone like myself, genuine desire is actually sort of a hindrance, and I will tell you why. When somebody has a level of attraction to you, like they, the woman has an eight or a nine or a 10 level of attraction to you. Yeah, that feels good. It's wonderful. But here's the thing. It's very time consuming. It's time consuming. And I'm just going to be honest. It could be annoying. It could be a little bit annoying because she's going to want so much of your attention. Genuine desire is this woman texting you all day long, calling you on her lunch break and want to talk to you. Just, she can't wait for you to get home so she can talk to you. She can't wait to call you. She can't wait to text you. She wants, she just wants to give herself to you because you've unlocked this like special part of her heart or her brain or you've unlocked this like special part of her and she wants to share it with you because she is in love. I think that's what that very, very high level of attraction is basically what we call sort of being in love. You know, all these emotions are rushing dopamine, serotonin, everything I just talked about. And yeah, it feels good. But what if you run a business? What if you run a couple of businesses? What if you're building your career? What if you're going to school and you know, you're trying to build a business on the side, you're trying to build this app, you have all this stuff you want to do and then you have this person, you're in a relationship with this person who because she feels so much genuine desire for you, she wants more of your time than you really want to give her. That's number one. That's the first problem that I have or the first challenge that I see about genuine desire is that it's time consuming to manage the emotions of somebody who feels that strongly towards you. Or I'll speak for me. The times that I have experienced that, it's been a handful of times in my life that I've dealt with somebody who really had like a super high level of attraction to me. And it was cool. I enjoyed it. I was appreciative of it. It was great great experiences. Most of the time, especially when I reciprocated those feelings. That's the other thing too. A lot of the times, this is a little sub note. A lot of the times, a person that has a very high level of genuine desire towards you, you a lot of the time are not going to feel that same level of desire because I don't know if you've noticed this, women tend to get kind of like turned off if you like them too much. So most of the time when she's feeling that super high level of attraction to you, you're going to sort of regard her like she's on 10 and you probably are on five, six, seven and a half. And actually that is what is that your sort of more nonchalant about it is actually what is causing her to like you so much, if that makes sense. The fact that you, that she can tell that she's more invested in you than you are in her is what is probably causing some of that attraction to happen. Because I don't know if you've experienced this. I definitely have. I've been in relationships or in interactions with people where I could tell their level of attraction to me was very high. And then maybe, cause I was like, well, this person really likes me a lot. You know, maybe I'll kind of like lean into this and just kind of like let it happen. And I start going along with it my level of attraction gets higher. I start calling her a lot. I start wanting to see her all the time. I start being super available. What happens? What do you think happens when you do that? And everybody here knows what happens when you, when you fall into that trap. Hit the like button right now if you understand what I'm saying. So 
most of the time, besides the fact that if you're doing anything else, if you have anything else important going on in your life, genuine desire is going to be a distraction from that. And then number two, majority of the, the majority of the time that somebody is feeling genuine desire for you, you're probably going to be not as attracted to them. <clears throat> the second thing that I want to point out here, and I need you guys to hear me very carefully when I say this, is there is a difference between wanting to spend time with a person that you're very attracted to because you just want to enjoy that time and wanting to validate your ego by spending time with somebody that you're very attracted to. Let me explain. If you've already experienced genuine desire a few times, you may feel however you feel about it. Personally, at the point in my life that I'm at, I don't have time for like genuine desire. Do I want this person to like me and for us to enjoy our each other's company? Yes. Um, but what I do want is just a good comfortability, a good, you know, sort of affectionate, a little bit more, you know, sort of friends with benefits or just a good vibe. I'm looking for a good vibe more than I'm looking for a genuine desire because I've had it already. Like I've already validated my ego in my understanding of how this works because I've already checked that box. Like I know I could get genuine desire if I need to get it from somewhere. I just want to have a good time. But if you are, this is mostly applying to guys that are younger and or guys that just have never experienced this. If you have never had that experience or you're trying to validate yourself by getting this attractive person to like you, that's different than what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having a good time with somebody who I want to share their company and us, you know, enjoying each other, meeting each other's needs, having a good experience, sharing a vibe, and then kind of being able to go into our own lives and do the, all the things, other things that we have going on and then, you know, meet each other again in a few weeks or something like that. If you are on the page of that you want to validate yourself by getting, making her like you, getting her to like you for you. I talked about this in my last video, cajoling, manipulating, coercing. If you have something to prove to yourself or to other people, because let's be honest, a lot of this, a lot of the stuff that you guys do to try to get women is not even for yourself and not even about the woman. It's because you want other people to see you with her. Be, be for real. Think about, think about how much you're interacting with women. I, I went through this when I was younger, for sure. It wasn't necessarily even about her. It was that I wanted my friends to see me with this girl. So if you're at that chapter in your life, which is totally normal and probably a part of everybody's trajectory on the planet, that's another reason why you don't get it. Because you're like, well, I want her to like me for me. Well, yeah, because you have to prove to yourself that it's possible. But if you're the type of person who already knows that if you needed to apply yourself to get somebody to like you for you, for whatever reason that you could do it, it would be less important. And it would be more about the first thing that I talked about, which is just like, yeah, let's just have a good time together. Let me show you a good time. Let me expose you to some, you know, cool stuff. Let's go to some interesting restaurants. Let me show you some, you know, cool shit. Let's, you know, talk and hear about each other's lives, spend some private time together. And then, you know, we could be free. Like we could just be free to like do other things that are important to us until we meet again. Let's just enjoy the moment. The cool thing about being at this point in my life, cause I'm almost 40 and is that I could do a lot for somebody who is like 10 or 15 years younger than me just because I've had this much time. Like I could show you, I could bring you places you've never been before. I could show you things you've probably never even heard of. Uh, I could teach you things about business. I wrote a book. I don't promote this book enough because I wrote a book called 30 Dangerous Ideas for Men in Their 30s. It's available on Amazon Kindle and I recommend you guys check this book out. It's basically my whole philosophy on life and all the things that are going to set you up to be successful as a man. So check my book out. But there's a lot of things I can teach women about, like having a YouTube channel, writing a book, promoting a business, creating passive income streams and things like that. I could actually change somebody's entire life with just giving them some of the information and the knowledge that I have. And the only thing that I would ask in return would take her like 20 minutes to do max and she would enjoy it. So I, <laughs> what I'm saying, the point of me making this saying this, <clears throat> the point of me saying all that is to say that my, I'm not at a point where I need to validate my ego through getting an individual woman to like me. And the other thing is too, this is a side point tangent I'm going to go on is some of these people when they're young tend to have pretty poor judgment in relationships. That's why in other cultures, traditional cultures, your parents choose your partner for you because they know that you're young and you don't know what you're doing. But when people are young, they tend to have very poor taste in partners. And the type of guys that, that these, the type of men that a lot of these chicks do like for them are like complete losers. Losers, guys that like work at smoke shops, live in their car, unambitious, 
guys that are like 32 and want to be rappers and shit. Being in the category of the type of guy that very attractive people like for them, it's not necessarily, there's nothing really positive about it other than the fact that you you got, you got the like ego validation of it. But what if you got your ego validation from other things, like the things I just talked about, starting businesses, writing books, creating, creating things, creating YouTube channels, creating courses, anything, it, literally anything else besides holding up, you know, posting a chick on Instagram and being like, yo, this is my girlfriend or this is, you know, this is the, what I did last night. So all your homeboys could be like, oh, 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 oh. Just think about that. Just think about that. Well, I'm not knocking that because I, I see it as a valid part of the maturation process. However, at a certain point, you had to ask yourself, depending on who you are and how old you are when you're watching this, ask yourself, how long am I going to validate myself through the opinions of women? Like, how important is it that she like me for me? You only like her because she's pretty. You don't know anything about that person. You don't know um, anything about her past, her background, her education level, her job history. You don't know uh, what drugs she might be on. You don't, you don't know what type of medication she might be on. No offense to anybody who's on medication. You don't know. There's a lot that you don't know about this person, but you're placing a lot of value on their opinion of you only because of her physical appearance. And that is something I think you should think about. The third and final point that I want to make about this topic is that everything in life is a trade-off. Everything in life is a trade-off of one thing to get another thing or one set of things to get another set of things. If you are going to tell yourself that you're going to invest time, because it's an investment of time, right? Every day and every minute, every hour, you're, it's not coming back. So if you tell yourself, okay, well, I'm going to invest time into getting very attractive people to like me for me. If you spend the next five years doing that, you get amazing at it. And you, ha you have all this, you know, all these stories of all these you know, wild escapades that you went on with all these chicks that liked you for you. Is that a good use of your time? Beyond, like I said, beyond the point of a basic proficiency, you actually have to, as a man, be good at social skills, be good at seduction skills, and you need them. You actually, can I point out to this? You need seduction skills and social skills and understanding the way that other people women think to actually even be successful in sugar dating. It's not just like because there is money involved that you don't have to also be physically attractive and have like good conversation. Sugar dating, though, in my experiences with it, has just been a form of dating. My point of, of saying this is, this is going to be disjointed. The point of me bringing this up is that you have to decide for yourself, what is your time worth? And then what is, like, are you really going to is it necessary or is it valuable to you to invest the amount of time to pursue the type of women that you want to date over and above the opportunity cost of like not working on your business, not advancing in your career, not investing in crypto or real estate? Because here's the thing, even if you get a woman to like you for you with genuine, quote unquote, genuine desire, how many hours did it take for you to convince that girl or for you to find that girl, right? So you have one woman that has genuine desire towards you. Most you probably talked to 200 women, right? You had to text or match on Tinder or go on Starbucks dates with 150, 200, 300, however many women to find one that will have genuine desire for you. And you wasted a lot of time. And that is the point that I'm trying to make. This decision, these decisions that I'm making in this context are really just about the opportunity cost of my time. And I am, I just, like I've said in my last video, I'm not going to invest a bunch of time into mastering the art of manipulating women to, to end up at 45 or 50 or 60 or whatever age and not be where I want to be in life because I spend all this time getting women to like me for me temporarily as well. This is the other thing that I want to point out about genuine desire, and I'm going to close on this, is that even when you get somebody to like you for you, when you get somebody to feel genuine desire for you, that's very temporary. It's so temporary because here's the thing. You could get her in that spot for six months, a year, two years, six years. The average marriage in the United States lasts seven years as of the time I'm making this video. So even if you get her exactly where you want her, she's all about you and she just wants to have your babies and pour love all on top of you forever. There is probably nine times out of 10, the majority of the time, that's a temporary experience and a temporary relationship. So what I would encourage you guys to do um, watching this video is 
I'm not trying to tell you to do one thing or another because everybody's different. If I wanted to have a family right now or if I was looking for like a long-term serious relationship, I would be moving differently. But because I'm on this path, this is what I'm choosing to do. And I'm trying to get you guys or sort of talking to you about understanding what I'm saying. You have to make choices with what you're going to do with your time and your life. And if you're choosing to prioritize the validation of your ego and getting people to like you for you, you are giving up advancing in other areas of your life. Straight up, you are. What are you giving up when you could be getting a degree or a certification to advance you in your career? When you could be you know, studying about cryptocurrency or real estate? When you could be creating a YouTube channel, writing a book, creating some type of, some type of income revenue stream, working on your body, working on your fitness, having a better relationship with your family, like your sisters, your siblings, your mom, your dad, your grandparents, if they're still around. Every choice that you make is a choice against something else. So this has been a more esoteric video than my, they usually are, but you have one life. It's ending second by second. Make choice, make mindful choices about what you do with that time. And don't let the highest priority in your life be getting somebody to like you for you just because she has a fat ass or just because she's pretty or just because you, she makes you feel a type of way, right? Understand that yeah, that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to close on that. All right, guys. I hope you got something out of this video, even though it's a little bit different than my typical content. I think I did tie it in pretty well. If you understand what I was saying, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. I think we're going to be at like 2,050 subs here pretty soon, which is pretty exciting. I uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.